Welcome back, Zergay fans, to Nail is Done. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match on Wanderlust. It's a request. Mana 12 versus Sparkles from Mana 12. So Mana 12 playing the Shieldbot Factory and Sparkles playing the Cloakbot Factory, both starting in locations that I consider more sensible than the previous game. So yeah, Cloaky versus Shields. The classic matchup, which also means a lot of rating on Sparkles as part of the one to actually do anything. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, though, because, again, Sparkles are going to have to rate quite a bit for this to work, but, I mean, they also probably will. I imagine they're fairly comfortable with the whole rating thing, so, yeah, we'll probably see a lot of that. Sparkles, on the other hand, is going in also for rating, and we aren't... I mean, because last game we saw Cloakie versus Shield, and we saw Cloakie go for a Reaver Rush. This game we're seeing Cloakie versus Shield, and it's much more typical. We're getting Glaive start... Like Glaive versus Bandit kind of thing. Nothing too out of the ordinary there, so I expect that will likely continue it that way, with nothing too out of the ordinary. Same time, though, we do have Sparkles a little bit behind as far as their expansion goes. Mana 12 already going to this, this north side of the map to try to build up some metal extractors, while Sparkles, they're building up what they can, but it's a little bit finicky. I mean, they got the radar up, but... They only have their main base. They don't have everything being built up below their main base in the lower sections. So I don't expect there to be a huge amount actually gained from this. As Sparkles, they are built, like I said, they're building up. They got something. They got radar and wind generators, but that's only going to go so far. At the same time, there's bandits coming in here from Mana 12, taking out one of the metal extractors for free. The second metal extractor not being really going to, not really going to be threatened because there's not a whole lot of metal extractors nearby. Solo Collector instead being the main target. But again, Mana 12 already had when it comes to economy. A Reaver is coming in to try to deal with this, but that Reaver is going to have a bit of a hard time actually finishing that off. Well, at the same time, Glaive's coming in from Sparkles, which Mana 12 was able to tear apart with some good retreat micro from that bandit. So Mana 12 is in a much safer position. They already are getting their outlaws, and that is going to be responded to by Reavers. So Sparkles is not going to be rushing in a bunch of ravers, raiders into a outlaw. Or rushing ravers into anywhere, because you don't rush ravers. They, they do things at their own pace. But raiders, on the other hand, do things very quickly, and that's where this bandit comes in, tearing apart yet another metal extractor, putting Sparkles' economy back on the back foot, as Mano 12 has consistently been ahead this entire game. And continuing to expand as well, so Mano 12 not letting that advantage go to their head there, continuing to just keep that up. And I do expect they're going to be just holding on to this. So we have yet another outlaw coming in here. And on top of everything else, so Sparkles, honestly, they're just constantly in this tight spot. Like, constantly unable to continue to actually build up. The one bandit still going. Still going around, still trying to find where it can deal some damage. This Southwest Metal Extractor is the only place that's really going to be vulnerable left. But, hey, it's dealt damage. It's done its job. This five-star bandit, it has done its work. It can take a well-deserved rest in peace, because this, this commander is going to make sure that, yeah, that, that's done. Same time, though, Outlaw coming in here, tearing apart yet another Metal Extractor on top of a Lotus, because why not? I mean, you got that splash damage, you might as well take out both. So yeah, the Lotus on top of the Metal Extractor, not really the best position, but it works. Same time, we do have Mana 12 coming in here with yet more of an attack. Yep, more on the top, and the Reaver versus Commander. This is the Commander win. The Commander already jumped. There's no way the Commander's going to get out of there. Fortunately for it, there was enough stuff distracting the Reaver, so at least the Commander can walk away. But that was way too close. That Commander could have died. Honestly, not to put a fine opponent, that Commander should have died. I mean, I'm glad it didn't, but it, it really kind of should have. Like, by all rights, there was no reason the Commander survived, but it did. So Mana 12 able to at least maintain some positioning on the north side of the map, while at the same time... Asserting positioning on the south side of the map, overall, though, Sparkles has managed to completely take their side of the map and start to expand further. So, yeah, economically speaking, Mana 12 is a little behind now. Despite the early raiding, this expansion over to the southeast was delayed. So, Mana 12, not as strong economically, but only by a little bit. And Sparkles, definitely not as strong in terms of production. They only have the factory. Whereas, Mana 12, they have factory, they have caretaker, they're good. They get everything they need. So, right now, Manu 12 is still in a stronger position. But at the same time, there's some Ronin. Because why not? Build the appropriate counter when your opponent has built up some stuff. 
So the Ronin is up the same and the size as well coming in from Sparkles though Forcing Mana 12 back again as Mana 12 is now continuing to be in this really tough position Their commander is going to go down and that no what the heck 3 H 3% HP that commander should have died But it didn't so that's good But it should have holy crap should it have but hey if you're gonna stay alive you're gonna stay alive at the same time though Tick coming in here, or Imp rather coming in here, to stop everything Mana 12 has to push in. The Sparkles will be able to successfully defend their main base. And that successful base defense does come with another assault over in Mana 12's base. Reavers coming in, tearing everything to pieces over to the north side of the map. So Mana 12 is just going to have a very difficult time holding on to any of this. Sparkles, I'm sure they're really happy right now. I mean, the Thugs are still in the main base, but that's fine. They'll be gotten rid of soon enough. And Outlaw Thug over to the south side of the map. That actually is going to be a bit of a problem. A bit of revenge coming from Mana 12, although Mana 12 is 10 metal per second behind. So Sparkles still winning out this as the Reaver is continuing to assault things. The Thug is still trying to fight back, and this Reaver is doing everything it can to deal with it, and it's doing a lot. And there's that Thug gone again. The Reaver still stays in the game, still stays on the map. Nowhere near dead yet, so the main base, Sparkles' main base is going to be a major concern. And I don't really see this going any way other than the Reaver dying sooner or later. But boy, sooner or later is certainly taking a while. Thug taking incredible damage, or Thug taking an incredible amount of damage actually. This is not working at all, but there's the Lotus coming in to finally save the day as that Reaver goes down with very little fanfare, and that is it. The Reaver finally goes down after taking out all of Manu 12's northern side of the base and threatening their main base. But it is, it is finally over, and at the same time, Mana 12 was able to take out Sparkles to the south side. But Sparkles already expanding over to the far south triple expansion, already expanding over to the north, taking both the plateaus, and just making it that Mana 12, yeah, they won the battle. They got a few things here and there, but Sparkles, 12, Sparkles is keen on winning the war. And that's exactly what they're planning on doing here. The Glaives coming in on top of that, but there are more Outlaws coming in to respond, and the Glaives should be going down, not able to do a whole lot of damage because that's what slow does to you. But off that, we are getting a bunch of Ronin to complete this fight, and that should be able to take out the Outlaws. And indeed, there's not much the Outlaws can do here. Trying everything they can, but it's, a, it's too short a range of unit, and the Thugs can't help either. And of course, of course, when it comes to Skirmishers versus Shields, Skirmishers do tend to win. So for now, Manu 12, they're consistently being kept on the back foot, being kept behind, unable to actually fight or anything, push forward. At very least, they do have a Stardust here to, to hopefully do something, but it's not enough. Does manage to kill one Ronin, but that's about it. And at the same time, the south side of the map, Sparkles continues to assault, as they have been on all sides. This is just Sparkles flanking Manu 12 gradually, but consistently taking them out on all sides over time. I mean, sooner or later, Manu 12 is going to be forced back. I mean, they already are being forced back. If nothing else, Manu 12 might actually be able to come in and start tearing apart the expansion over the south here, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And at the same time, we do also do have Manu 12 trying to push back against the northern assault, which is a little more successful in trying to push back against the south. But overall, Manu 12 just is not finding any traction. Sparkles, on the other hand, they have 44 metal per second to Manu 12's 24, 28 ish. They have most of the map under their control. They have gotten pretty much all the counters needed for the forces coming in from Mana 12. Although I like the Felon here. That is going to be handy. At least we'll get rid of the, the Rodent pretty well. But the Reavers. I mean, once the shields are done, the Reavers are going to be able to just come in here. The Ronin also just going to be able to come in there once that's done. And I like this the knight coming in to help just get rid of the shields because that's how this works. The knight has enough health they can get through the felon, and they have a lightning gun so they can just take out the shields. And also, you know, stun the felon out completely. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of follow-up forces. Sparkle sending in units one at a time, and that is giving Manu 12 a little bit of room to maneuver. Since at this point, their army is just consistently bigger in the right spots. I mean, this is entirely a positioning game at this point. Sparkles and Mana 12, they're kind of getting a bit more even in terms of economy. Their attrition is about the same. Army value should be higher for Sparkles, but it might not be. Same time, the Thug's coming in here and getting torn apart in the south side. So, position is one thing, but 
there is still a unit counter to deal with, and the fact that knights do pretty much counter shields is an important thing to bear in mind. At the same time, though, yeah. At the same time, though, we do. What is the armor value right now? The armor value is actually in favor of Men of 12 by 2,000 metal. So it looks like Sparkles have spent most of their money on defenses and economy. They haven't spent a whole lot of it on army. And that is potentially a problem going forward. Sparkles, however, is still in a reasonably strong position. So I'm not too concerned about Mana 12. I am a little bit concerned about whether or not Mana 12 is going to be able to actually get through all these forces, like all these defenses. But if, if the south side is gone, that actually will open things up for Mana 12. And they are going for it. That south side is the main bastion for Sparkles to actually get into Mana 12's base. And where Mana 12 is going to be able to build up a lot of economy should they take it and it looks like it is going to go down and where is the nearest builder right okay it's actually the main base a few comics in the main base that could come over to the south side and start building it up for mana 12 at the very least sparkles has lost about eight metal per second but for the amount of reclaim sparkles has that might not be worth it right now it might not make a huge difference yet should fairly soon but it won't yet and that is still enough but again, these convicts should be pushed forward, as one is, actually. One is being pulled forward to reclaim everything on this battlefield and probably build out some metal extractors afterwards. Same time, there's Sparkles' commander ready to get killed, actually, because it needs to run away. And that commander is really not in the best of spots. But now, having been completely removed from there, it should be okay. I'm not entirely confident, but it looks like it'll probably be fine. I mean, commander's... Commanders will do what they do. It's a little bit tricky to actually set up. I mean, that commander is very weak. It's going to be hard for it to actually do anything in the front lines. Same time, though, it is still Sparkles' economy game. It's Manu's army game, but Sparkles' economy game, although Sparkles' defensive game, is not working out so well either. Oh, but that Stardust, that Stardust is almost dead, and it's able to tear apart everything over the north side. That is amazing. Sparkles and Stardust getting way more value than I really think they should have, but hey, it worked out. So, however it works, it works. And that puts Sparkles, again, in a fairly strong position. Again, they are still kind of winning out in economy, but the army value, 2,500 metal, primarily thanks to attrition. That's 1,500 of that as attrition. The other 1,000 is just, I guess, just er just the fact that there's more investment in army on, Spark on Manu's side than Sparkles' side. Uh, Sparkles, unfortunately, the thing they don't have right now is mass damage. The thing they don't really need right now, however, is mass damage. The Thunderbird is coming in here, stunning out all of Manu's forces, unfortunately, first, before being taken out. But it does at least tear apart a fair number of spark or tear through Manu 12's army. But again, got Sparkles' army first. That was a bit of a mistake, I'm afraid. But here's the real follow-up coming in here. Phoenix not able to do much, unfortunately. Gets a small hit in, but hits the shields instead of actually hitting any of the units here, and doesn't really significantly damage them. I mean, it's set a few of them on fire, but it's not what was needed. Like, what was needed was for that follow-up for the Phoenix to happen immediately after the Thunderbird. That is the biggest thing. And that Thunderbird is going to be... Uh, going to have been a bit of a problem, but it looks like it's not going to be that much of a problem going forward. I mean, the problem here right now, of course, is that the felons are just taking out any air units that come in. Manor 12 doesn't even need the vandals. They just have the felons. And that is led to 5,000 metal worth of attrition, which is the entire difference in army size is currently attrition. Sparkles has shifted their investment into army, but it's just, at this point, Sparkles needs to be actually tearing apart Manor 12's army, actually winning fights, like trading well. But the trades are going entirely in favor of Mana 12. And that is the primary issue right now. I mean, I like the way the defenses are being built up, but defenses do not win games. Smart use of army wins games. And also not letting your owl get killed. That also wins games. But yeah, smart use of an army wins games. And that's not what we're seeing. And unfortunately, that is going to mean a lot of damage being dealt to, Mana to Sparkles. I mean, the run and R up, and I like that. But bear in mind, Manu 12 has split their army in half, and this army in the north is still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with all these Ronin, which is pretty much Sparkles' entire force. While at the same time, the army to the south is just wiping out everything with no resistance. I mean, there's one Phantom, that's true, but that's about it. Other than the Phantom, there is no res resistance coming in here from Manu 12's army. And over to the north, Sparkles and Manu 12, like I said, duking it out without a whole lot of advantage either way. I mean, Manu 12 is being pushed back slowly, 
but that's fine. That force is practically a distraction to allow for the silent side force to actually do its job, which it is doing remarkably well. At this point, Mana 12 has managed to gain an economic advantage, having taken the south, having broken the southwest, and at, with this army destroyed, Sparkles should be able to take everything. There is nothing... Sorry, Mana 12 should be able to take everything. Sparkles has basically lost everything thanks to that. And this assault here from Mana 12 should be the final assault. Final attack into Mana 12's base. Nothing really able to deal with it right now. The Thunderbird is up. Thunderbird is possibly ready. Two of them are in. One drops in. That does stun out all of Mana 12's forces, giving Sparkles a little bit of time. But at the same time, the north side of the map is where Sparkles' commander has decided to go to die. That is the hill. They, this hill is the hill they have chosen to die on. Because that is exactly what's going to happen. There is no way it's going to be able to at least win this. And Sparkles realizing that. Throws in the towel with a GG. Good start. Good economy. Unfortunately, too much investment in defenses than in, in attack. And not enough investment in forces that would actually tear apart their opponents. Like, it would actually destroy Mana 12's army. As Mana 12 is just able to consistently build up an army. We can see that army value just consistently rose. While Sparkles consistently plateaued. If we look at value loss, like... Sparkle's just consistently losing more and more units while building only enough to replace. And, of course, the Felon's just tearing apart all the Thunderbirds. So, yeah, Thunderbirds... If anyone's wondering about the Thunderbirds in terms of nerfs, Felons kind of deal with that. And, of course, Outlaws deal with Imps, so it is kind of tricky for Cloakie to actually deal with Shield Bond in the late game. I do like the use of the Phantoms, but there really weren't enough of them. And just generally, there weren't enough forces coming in to make it actually likely to work out. So, Sparkle's... There they are, throwing in the towel, and that is game. But just point out though, Sparkles did have reasonably good metal usage. Like their metal income was on point, metal usage was on point, metal excess was really minor. But I mean, the metal usage was way ahead of Manitoba the entire game. It's just a lot of it went into went into defenses, and also into upgrading the commander apparently, but not into the army, not early on, not enough to actually hold off what Manitoba was building. So Mana 12, really well done there, just going for a strong army and winning that way. But yeah, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, thanks for all the requests too. So until, I guess, Monday, since I'm planning on doing the whole Monday, Wednesday, Saturday thing again now that I'm back. I will see you next time. Have a good night, everyone.